So guys, let's talk about the diseases of the eyelid. Now in the previous lecture, we talked about the eyelid anatomy. So let's quickly review. There's going to be skin. Then inside, you will find the tarsal plate. As you know, the tarsal plate is a fibrous capsule, which gives it the shape. Then inner to that, you have the conjunctiva. This is called the palpebral because the eyelid is called the palpebra. This is called the palpebral conjunctiva. Now that is continuous with the sclera. So if you are to take the eye from the front, you will see this is the eyelid. The conjunctiva which comes this way is the palpebral conjunctiva. Now here's our cornea. So the conjunctiva that comes on the surface of the sclera is called the bulba conjunctiva. It's called the bulba conjunctiva. It terminates at the limbus. The limbus is the point in which the cornea separates from the sclera. That means it is this layer, which is the boundary. So this is the limbus. Now, one more important structure about the conjunctiva. So the palpebral conjunctiva will come like this. And this is called the conjunctival fornix. This is the point in which the change from the palpebral conjunctiva to the bulbar conjunctiva happens. Next, there are some muscles. So two muscles are involved in the opening and the closing of the eye. One muscle attaches to the tarsal plate from within the eye, the orbit. It is called the levator palpebrae superioris, the levator palpebrae. Then we have another muscle which is present around the eye. This is the muscle which is innervated by the facial nerve. That means it's a facial muscle. It is called the orbicularis oculi. So the levator palpebrae, since it's within the orbital cavity, it is innervated by cranial nerve 3. And the orbicularis oculi by cranial nerve 7. You must always write cranial nerves in their Roma, Roman numerals. Now, let's talk about the glands. So let's talk about the glands of the eyelid. There are some outer glands. This is this and the mole glands. This and the mole glands. You guys should have used a different color, but there's also something called the meibonium glands. Now the this glands and the meibonium glands, they are sebaceous glands. So these two are sebaceous glands. And the mole glands, they are sweat glands. These are modified sweat glands. We'll learn more about these in the different diseases. And finally, the functions of the eyelid. Now, the first thing is it protects the eye. So whenever some object is coming towards the eye, what do you do? You close your eye. Second thing, it helps in distributing of tears. This is a very important situation because the tears come from the lac lacrimal gland which is present superiorly on the lateral side of the eye. Now there will be ducts which drain tears. How does it travel all around the eye? How does it spread evenly? It is because of the closing of the eyelid. So when the eyelid closes, this fluid distributes around the whole eye. It helps distribute the tears. And also when you close your eyes, unless it's very sharp light, light cannot pass through that, especially when you sleep. Now let's talk about different diseases of the uh, eyelid. First is an infection of the glands. We'll talk about the glandular infections first. So we have the meibomian glands. Here are the meibomian glands. I'm drawing the posterior surface. So here are the eyelashes. So over here are the meibomian glands. And if you are to evert your eyelid, the 
this surface if you are to take it outside I'm going to erase this part now so if you are to invert your eyelid and look in the case of an infection you will find a painful well demarcated nodule like this a painful well demarcated nodule this is called a hodulum you can see it here it's an acute infection you can see the nodule so it's an acute infection which forms a well defined subcutaneous nodule it's below the skin in the subcutaneous layer next it is an infection so there is going to be pus and rupture so this will be like a pimple it's very similar to a pimple a very painful pimple which you can feel on the inner surface of the eyelid and the symptoms there will be pain there will be redness swelling so uh, when you look at it from if you were to invert the eyelid you will see a bump on the eye and it will be present as a nodule if you are to invert your eyelid and then the treatment it's an infection most likely due to a bacteria so antibiotics you can give it as antibiotic drops or orally and if it requires surgical drainage there's two ways you can go about it you can have a horizontal skin incision so if this was the lower eyelid here's one you can cut across this the other one is across the conjunctiva it depends on the location it depends on a lot of factors but the other cut is across like this across the conjunctive layer finally the complications complicate these bacteria are usually staphylococci and cellulitis is a very common it can lead to cellulitis that is inflammation of the skin so cellulitis is a spreading inflammation in pathology you will learn it is called a spreading inflammation for more details let me just tell you guys what it is like so usually okay our skin has the epidermis and then the dermis and then there is the subcutaneous fat below that for now this is not relevant what happens is if there is a break in the skin and bacteria proliferate here that will lead to them coming through and creating a whole inflammation usually this is present in diabetic patients it's very common in diabetic patients because of uh, neuropathies that is the peripheral nerves do not work properly so in the leg the peripheral nerves such as the us that transmit pain they do not work properly so these patients they are big shots that they decide they can walk on the roads on the hot roads without any slippers or any things and what happens is they burn their legs so that can lead to an infection and cellulitis can also develop the other one is deadly cavernous sinus thrombosis now if you remember the danger area of your face you should remember that the nose the eyes and the mouth so there is a region called the danger area of the face the reason is the blood vessels in this region they drain directly to the okay there are blood vessels such as the ophthalmic veins which go all the way to the cavernous sinus now the cavernous sinus is present if you have watched my neurology lecter, lectures you should know there is the crista galli the cella trishica sorry the cella trishica and here is the pituitary gland and we have the sphenoid bone and over here we have the cavernous sinus the reason i am talking about the cavernous sinus here is 
because we need to know something about it there are some openings so several cranial nerves cranial nerve 3 4 so cranial nerve 3 4 cranial nerve v1 and cranial nerve 6 cranial nerve 6 goes across this passes through the cavernous sinus these three go on the lateral wall that is along the lateral wall and also we have our internal carotid artery which goes up like this and along with this internal carotid artery a very important structure the sympathetic nervous system comes and they will go through this foramen to the eye we will learn about that foramen in orbital trauma so all these nerves everything they pass through here and over here we have our eyes the orbit so now now back to this if there is any patient who squeezes there's going to be blood vessels going like this which drain to the cavernous sinus so this infection can come from these inside to the cavernous sinus that is very deadly next is a collision it is chronic inflammation with the presence of a cyst this is the definition of a collision so it's a round firm it's firm non-tender it is not tender painless subcutaneous nodule okay it may rupture and spontaneous resolve so just imagine a very similar situation like this but this time there's no infection it's just a chronic inflammation which forms a cyst now remember the structure of the eyelid we have the meibomian glands if there is a growth outwards like this it can cause the skin also to be pushed apart like this so you will get the swelling and this is usually due to a blockage here in this outflow part there could be a blockage and that causes this bulging out because it's a cyst cysts are filled with fluid and if these cysts tends to recur that means they come and go at let's say at certain intervals time intervals then you need to do a biopsy to rule out adenocarcinomas okay what is adenocarcinoma back to pathology adenocarcinoma is a glandular tumor so carcinomas are epithelial cell tumors so glandular tissues are epithelial cells so this is a glandular tumor it makes sense and it is seen especially in elderly now the treatment this treatment begins with warm compressors that means you take a flannel a towel per se and then you dip it in hot water and you uh, compress there you compress on that nodule then you massage and you have to massage this well you need to somehow try to open these block ducts so when you put pressure let's say you massage and you put pressure there's a chance the pressure you put will cause a forced opening and when you put warm compressors it's going to cause dilation so you need to do it usually if it is a baby you will need to do it very carefully and also you need to keep your lid clean your eyelid clean so the most uh, the non-irritant substance you can use which can clean is baby shampoo so guys i missed one topic that is blepharitis blepher means related to the eyelid you will learn another word called blepharospasm that is spasm of the eyelids now blepharitis is a inflammation of the eyelids and this is most often a chronic in it's due to a chronic infection or inflammation now two causes one could be bacterial overgrowth the other seborrhea or seborrheic scruff what does that mean basically the dandruff like particles that can accumulate and cause the debris to build up at the base of the eyelashes and then they can 
cause bacteria to grow, shed into the skin, and cause ulceration, and eyelash loss can be seen. So the symptoms, now this is a condition that involves the entire eyelid. So if you are to take the eyelids, you will see the eyelid is inflamed. That is, you will have the cardinal signs, the burning feeling, the creativeness, the redness. And also, due to ocular irritation, you will have foreign body sensation and photophobia. Those two come together with ocular irritation. Then, if this occurs in the anterior aspect of the eyelids, that is in this region, there is going to be eyelash lost. And also, you can see that white color. I know that, okay, you can see it here. This. You can see that seborrheic accumulations like this on the eyelashes. Next, if the inflammation goes into the meibomium glands or the posterior part of the eyelids, it can cause the meibomium glands to clog up. So what does that mean? There is a block here and this will swell up. So what you can do is you take a cotton tip. So let me draw that. You take a cotton tip and you push down on it to try to open this blockage. And if there is a blockage, there could be pus like material which comes out. That means the uh, glands are not properly draining. And the treatment for this is good lid hygiene. So basically, what you do is you need to wash your eyelashes daily with baby shampoo. Also, you need to scrub the eyelashes very carefully. You need to scrub the eyelashes. Then because there are infections, you can give topical antibiotics. But you never give the steroids alone. So what happens if you give steroids when there is an infection? It depresses our immune response. So that causes the bacteria to become stronger. They are able to come out, come out stronger in the fight. And this steroid, which we can use, is fluoromethylone. And remember, this is a chronic disease. It can recur. It's just like dandruff. It can come again and go.